Hello and welcome to this session. This session we will see the various components available on Arduino hardware which is Arduino Uno board and the software options available in software IDE and later we will see a simple blink LED program which will blink LED number L which is connected to pin number 13. So before we begin let's see what are the various components available on Arduino hardware. So to begin with, we have already seen the first and most important component is Atmega328 microcontroller. So this microcontroller contains internal ROM, RAM as you know and it is it also contains an Arduino bootloader. So you may ask what is an Arduino bootloader? So Arduino bootloader is the first program which executes when you power on the device. So this this bootloader communicates over serial com serial port and wait for a new program so we write program on this IDE and then we say upload to microcontroller it comes through this USB cable and goes into ROM of this microcontroller so we'll see how it goes in our next session before that see let's see what are the various components we have so the next component are digital input output pins so here is the series of digital input output pins till here and this pin number 0 and 1 can be used as serial communication. So you understand serial communication. Serial communication is two wire communication. It's a full duplex communication used to communicate microcontrollers with PC or other peripherals which support RS-232 communication which is a serial communication. We also have this 16 megahertz crystal. So this provides um, clock to this microcontroller. Clock is like a pulses, a regular pulses upon which a microcontroller executes uh, instruction. So higher the clock speed, faster is the microcontroller. It's a simple rule of thumb. We also have this Atmega 16U2 microcontroller which is programmed for uh, USB to serial as a USB to serial communicator. So instead of using FTDI chips which are very common in your USB to serial dongles, uh, Arduino board uses uh, Atmega 16U2 microcontroller which, is been, which has been programmed. The reason they use this is they can update the firmware as and when required and also it gives more flexibility for external programmer to be updated. Here we have analog input lines. So what are analog input lines? All the microcontroller, most of the microcontrollers are, sorry, all of them are digital devices. So they cannot uh, process analog data. Means most of the microcontrollers, they cannot process analog data unless they have an inbuilt analog to digital hardware, inbuilt analog to digital converter. This microcontroller does, so do Arduino board has this six analog inputs. So where do we need analog inputs? All our real world signals are analog signals. What we see, what we hear, what I speak, every vibration is an analog signal. The temperature value coming from a temperature sensor, gyro sensor, or take any suppose pressure sensor, uh, atmospheric uh, barometer, that is a pressure sensor, all of these they give analog output. So with Atmega 328P microcontroller you can have six analog inputs and similarly you have analog output using PWM. So we'll see PWM in respective section. We have this external power adapter. Suppose you are not using any programmer, suppose this USB cable, you can simply use this external adapter, DC adapter to power up the board. Of course you cannot program using this adapter, for that you need anyway USB cable. This power adapter is used in places where you just need to execute the program resided in microcontroller not to reprogram the microcontroller 
and also it gives you flexibility to uh, choose various types of power supply instead of sticking to a regular PC power supply which is coming from this uh, USB cable. Suppose you want to use external batteries so which is supported here from 6 to uh, 9 volt or 12 volt battery you can connect. You can see here there are there is a so let me clear all these markings and let me show you so you can see here we have this V in and ground so V in is voltage input and ground you understand it's a board ground and this V in you can input direct DC supplies to microcontroller it doesn't require any filtering whereas here whereas this uh, requires a lot of filtering it has this uh, power regulator IC it has this power capacitor electrolytic capacitors which does most of the filtering we have here uh, this TX and RX pin so the program which this microcontroller uh, sorry the Arduino board get programmed using this USB cable and it works on this TX and RX communication so whenever you program you will see this TX and RX LED they blink so this we will see shortly and let me see any more peripherals I left out okay so there is an external programmer so header which is not required now I will let you know whenever it's required although this is used to uh, reprogram the bootloader or it can be used as a uh, suppose you want this Arduino to not use any bootloader at all you want to use it as a simple microcontroller board like any other microcontroller board in that case you you don't need Arduino bootloader so to remove Arduino bootloader and use <coughs> your sketches Arduino sketches directly from microcontroller ROM you can use this ISCP header so this uses SPI protocol which you will see shortly so that's all about the board and let's come to the software part so this is the IDE which we installed last time and I am using my Ubuntu desktop and for all these tutorials we will see only on we will use only Ubuntu desktop the reason is number one the windows you are anyway familiar with and it's it's time you can learn a different operating system Ubuntu or any Linux version is widely used in <coughs> single board computing like Raspberry Pi, BeagleBoard and other such boards. It is widely used in Android. So Android is based on Linux kernel. It is widely used in servers. It is widely used in many supercomputers, desktops and tablets. So it's a good time to learn Ubuntu as well. So with the, with the help of this Arduino IDE and other sessions in our IoT sessions and Raspberry Pi sessions, we will stick to Ubuntu desktop <coughs> so as to give you maximum exposure so coming back to this IDE so this contains various toolbar menu so in the file we have new which is a new sketch anyway so instead of saying programs the Arduino environment refer these as sketches so whatever program you write it's a sketch So go to file, you have open to open previous sketches, open recent sketches, sketchbook, again your recent sketch, examples. So this is the best part. So you get all the basic examples right away, right built in your Arduino IDE. And it contains almost all popular microcontrollers, sorry, uh, popular interfaces available with Arduino. Save, save as you anyway know, page setup is for printing preferences let's see what are the different preferences we have here oh, yep. so you, you have the location for windows you have a different location you can browse wherever you want to save your sketches 
and language i'm using system default which is english for me font size you understand and show verbose output during compilation and upload so let me check this to enable this option for next tutorial where i will show how arduino works so this will be helpful so this is not required for a normal operation this i am doing only to show you the debug output Compiler warning none fine display line numbers by default it gets disabled I enabled for this session Code folding verify code for upload and this all you understand So let me disable check for updates and That's it. It's very simple preferences dialog press ok to save Quit will quit the IDE Come to edit cut copy copied for forum so this will format your text to paste it in forums arduino forums or any other forums copy as html the code will be formatted nicely in an html format comment and comment indent in unindent you know them well so we will use mostly the keyboard shortcuts control r will compile and control U will upload upload using programmer so here you will get an option which programmer you want to use export compiled binary okay we will see this so sketch folder you know which what is your sketch folder so my sketch folder is home so it will show me the my home folder okay so include library and suppose you are writing a program on uh, EEPROM or say suppose EEPROM is an electrical erasable programmable read-only memory which uh, <coughs> okay so this is my code folder so let me close it so it took a lot of time I don't know why fine so include library is is like including header files in your C program so suppose we, we want to use SD SD stands for SD card so if I press this it will include hash and code std sd.h you can manually write this also if you don't know which header file to use for sd you can simply use this command so let me remove this line so this way you can include many libraries which are freely available in arduino ide At the end you have add file you can add file to this present ide So now I won't do this and okay <coughs> auto format you understand formats the text format the programs serial monitor like we have seen <coughs> serial interface here so this will show the serial data serial monitor will open a serial data so this is a serial shortcut for serial monitor so when you click on it it will show a window where you will see the data input output data from serial monitor so this will see in our serial chapter board is auto selected arduino uno you have various arduino variants official and unofficial so this is the unofficial variant which i included which i use Digispark <coughs> port in Windows you will find COM port and in Linux it's a dev TTY ACM0 fine it could be changed if I remove my cable and reconnect so my cable is connected now so let me remove the cable and you won't see any port now programmer you need not to worry because for default Arduino uh, operation this need not to be selected so this is required only if you are using some third party arduino boards or you are using arduino for programming some other devices so this you will see when when time comes let me connect back the port and you have to toggle this menu so you can see my slash dev ttycm cm0 is again selected you should never do this burn bootloader unless you are very sure you want to replace the bootloader anyway it won't work now help you get online help environment language reference 
everything built in here so this reference will open a web browser and show you the offline content of uh, manual it's all about the IDE so I have placed my both windows side by side so that now we can proceed to programming so we are here in our last section and we will see a blink LED program <coughs> sorry so so this is what makes Arduino very very special so unlike other microcontroller development environments you are familiar with you have to include lot of libraries files you have to configure many ports to make its input output and before you program a hex file which is a hexadecimal binary file to microcontrollers ROM you have to perform a significant amount of code and effort here you have only these two functions any Arduino program will have at least these two functions one is void setup and other is void loop void is because you are not returning anything and void setup stands for setting up the uh, microcontroller so what do we mean by setting up so for example uh, we have these pin numbers listed here As you can see so let me highlight those so we have pin number 0 to pin number 13 and some analog pins here so suppose for this LED program I want to make pin number 13 which is here a digital input pin you can see it's written digital and for this Arduino board, Arduino Uno board, pin number 13 is connected to this LED. And let me put a marker here. This LED. So it's something written L, which means this is an LED and connected to pin number 13 internally. We know it from the data sheet. So this is the default environment, program environment which uh, Arduino provides void setup and void loop empty functions so we have to write our code here so just uh, get into this thought process how to proceed for void setup is a function where you have to set up the pins for example in our case pin number 13 so there is a program sorry there is a function inbuilt function says pin mode we will see how to locate these functions in our later session for now I just want to show you just want to tell you how easy to write a program in Arduino pin mode 13 comma I will say output you may ask why output simple because this pin number 13 is internally connected to LED which is an output so LED will glow when a voltage is high LED will not glow when voltage is zero so we have to make it output we are not receiving anything inside microcontroller we have to give this pin number 13 high or low to make this LED on or off so void setup pin mode 13 output that's all for setup that comes to void loop so before we blink an LED let's start to glow an LED so what it requires so I already know there is a function known as digital write as the name suggests we are writing to digital pin we are not reading from it writing is you understand is writing so it also receives two argument one is pin number which is already configured as output and next is the state so if I make high and put a semicolon at the end of the function I think my program is complete so what I have to do I have to compile the program okay so how a compiler works it will convert this C like program Arduino program it will look for pin mode it will convert the pin number 13 to its equivalent uh, first of all it will convert this pin mode 13 output to equivalent AVRC AVR GCC program and set the parameters according to it and then a digital write pin number 13 high means it will set pin number 13 as high and this program will be converted into a hexadecimal program a binary program which is uh, microcontroller friendly program you cannot put dot exes in the binary uh, sorry in microcontroller you have to put dot hex files which is get uh, translated into microcontroller 
program and serially we transfer it to this microcontroller board these things we will see in our next session anyway so this button verify will compile the program it is asking me to save this program and I will simply say enter and it saved because we have checked you remember in the configuration we checked show compilation and upload information so it is showing me all this debug information which is done here so program is compiled you can see it says it uses 846 bytes 2% of the program storage so let me upload it first we will analyze the internals later you can see the pin L sorry the TXRX blinked for a while while programming and this LED is glowing now so let me clear all these markers and you can see LED is now glowing so how to turn off the LED very simple you have to make and modify this program make it low and if you do simple upload it will automatically save and upload although this is not a good practice but it's good to do a quick debugging so you can see the LED is off now so we know how to turn on the LED and we know how to turn off the LED so now I want to blink the LED means on and off with one second of interval so first let us make the LED high by turning it on and we will do a delay of say 500 so 500 means 500 millisecond which is 0.5 second so half second of delay so okay so this says digital write make pin number 13 high so this pin this 13 number pin will go high and remain high for 500 millisecond so this is a sequential program so first this line will be executed then this line will be executed next line will be digital write same pin number 13 low sorry all caps so now I am saying okay turn on the LED sorry turn off the LED so just understand the sequence now so this is the void setup it will be executed only once so the property of this void setup and void loop is the, are the following void setup will execute only once as you know you have to set up the pins ports only once in your program and void loop is an infinite loop it will execute forever any microcontroller program is designed to run indefinitely because these programs these applications are almost standalone and they never get attention after programming it so they have to monitor they have to receive data continuously so this void loop function is for that so digital write low this will turn off the LED but how long we want to turn it off so again we want to turn it off for 500 millisecond and just dry run this program in your mind so what you will see here is when void loops get executed first digital write high will execute sequentially this pin will become high pin number sorry this LED will become high then there will be a high state for 500 millisecond then it will become low for again 500 millisecond this program repeats as the void loop comes in the second iteration this digital write 13 again goes high so this pin will go on again this LED will come on again and this delay will again 500 milliseconds so this will be on for 500 milliseconds this will be off for 500 milliseconds again 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 so this process will repeat forever so let me clear the markings so let us upload this program you can see our LED is blinking I hope you understood this program if not anyway we will see these programs in detail in depth in our later session so here we complete this session 
So I will see you in the next session where we will see how Arduino works. See you then.